Hi. Hi, my name is Erica LaShawn. Thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, it is May 20, 21st, 2023. It's 9.34 p.m. Uh, like I said, my name is Erica LaShawn. Thank you. Um, so another topic is um, like when I come up with topics... I have to come up with things that I'm interested in. So if I'm not interested in it, I cannot talk about it. It just doesn't work that way. I I never sought out um, being on that journey. So if I'm not interested in it, I'm not going to talk about it. So I'm like, okay, so let me just talk about something. Because I was a um, child pr- protective specialist. And I just see a lot of cases. I'm looking at a lot of stuff. It's a lot of murder and mayhem. I'm into murder and mayhem. I've I've said that. I'm into murder and mayhem. I'm into serial killing. I'm into watching documentaries and all that stuff. So I am into that. So being a CPS worker. So I was a CPS worker too. So over the 11 years, I've worked my way up and became a two. You start off one, you turn to a two, then you become a supervisor one, you turn to a two, manager, you know, you just go up the ranks or whatever. So I've been at my agency for 15 years, but 11 of those years were um, CPS work. So straight up knocking on doors uh, in the field. So I did that. So I'm like, let me talk about it. Um, uh, so I'm going to try to, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. I just jumped in the pool. I don't know where I'm going with this. So um, there are times, okay. Uh, I live in New York City. So our our child welfare system is slightly, not slightly, is different from other cities and countries. I say countries because I've called Puerto Rico before. So we have things set up here where we can contact different people in different places. <clears throat> All right, let's start with Puerto Rico. So once I'm out of case in Puerto Rico, I'm not go- going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about why I do what I'm doing right now. I can't do it. I can't, I can't revisit it, and I'll talk about that, and I hope I don't forget. But anyway, I had to call Puerto Rico one time because one of my kids somehow ended up in Puerto Rico. All right, so it was like four, four o'clock or something. <clears throat> so I'm calling Puerto Rico to check on. It was after five. Let me be fair. It was like 5.30. We work way later than that. It was like 5.30. So I'm calling Puerto Rico. The answering machine came on like you was calling your, your doctor. The answering machine came on and was like, hi. Call us back. We closed. And I was thinking... Excuse me, because we're not in New York City. We don't um, abuse happens 24 hours a day. And that's how we look at it. That's why I work the weird tour that I work because we're open 24 hours. Some some of some places are open 24 hours a day. So I work at a facility that's open 24 hours a day. So we are all in there like that. That's what we do. So anyway, so at this point in time, this was not the case. I was at a field office. It was nine to five normal working hours. I know I no longer work normal working hours. So anyway, I'm calling Puerto Rico. The answer machine come on. They like leave a message. I'm like, hello. I'm like, okay, bye. <clears throat> so I was thinking, like, wow, it's not like that everywhere. Like different places really don't. One time I called North Carolina. <clears throat> So 
So I'm on the phone, like, hello, you know, whatever. And the girl, I, I got a hold of the caseworker. And I'm like, have you, have you met the family yet? In my mind, I'm thinking like, they on my ass. Now I'm on your ass. So I'm asking the girl, I'm like, have you, have you met the family yet? Did you go there yet? She was like, no, accent, everything. I'm from Michigan. We have a Southern, we have a twang. We have a twang, but down South is a whole nother thing. So she was on the phone. Like, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm a, I was going to go about it tomorrow. Like some stuff like that. I'm like, huh. that doesn't suffice with us up here. So it gave me a. Uh, she just, it just gives me a, um, a feeling of different states, different countries, different places. They look at child welfare in a different way. New York does not do that. We are very aggressive, very aggressive. Um, so that's what it was. Okay. So moving forward. Okay. CPS work. All right. Um, year two. Year two, I was like, what? Okay, let's start from the beginning. I've been in child welfare my whole way as an adult. <clears throat> like, with a career, a job. It's always been youth. It's always been kids. It's always been child welfare like that. So, I was in foster care. I worked in foster care. I worked at Covenant House. Homeless teens, that's Covenant House. I worked foster care. Straight up residential treatment facilities like straight up my whole career has been like that so when I first started not when I first started I'm jumping around when I wanted to move to the city to the city working for the city I was with a private sector and um I Working for the city was a step up for me because we, we have a, we all have, a, we all, all of us, all the five boroughs, upstate New York, all of us, the whole state, we share a database system, all of us. So I could be in Brooklyn, but homegirl is in Albany. We still know the same stuff. So New York State has a system where all of us can communicate with each other. So when I was in private sector in foster care, a private agency, they, 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 the money is not coming from the city. It's, it's privately funded. They're getting funded by other people. So I used to work in that um, private sector. So... I would go into the database system to enter my notes, to talk about my kids, what they did, you know, whatever. And I would, there were, there were, there were New York City agency workers that were also working on the case. And they were like, boom, this one girl, I'm not going to say her name. This one girl, she was like, every time, every time I went into the database, her notes were up to date. Everything was up to date. She was on it. So I kind of looked up to that. I was like, wow, I like that. You know, because I'm over here. And y'all don't want to know what goes on in private sector. Nonprofit organizations. It's more family friendly. They care about you more. But, um, okay. So anyway, so this person was boom. Her, her notes was on time. Everything, whatever. So I aspired to go with the city of New York. <laughs> so I tried it. Got it. Almost when I was at when I was at the little thing or whatever, the lady, I, her name too, that lady said, listen, when y'all leave here, don't call me. We're going to call you. If y'all get the job, we're going to call you. Don't call us. So I, I left thinking like, oh, Lord, the pressure was getting, I couldn't take it no more. I was like, skip that lady. I called. I'm like, mm, -mm. called. I called. I was like, um, excuse me. My name is so-and-so. I, I, I tried out for something. Do you guys know anything? I was like, skip this. 
That's what you have to do in life. Forget it. Go for it. Anyway, so look, they put me on hold. They put me on hold. I'm on my job with them. I'm on my job with them. I'm on my job with them. Like, hello, hello. Can y'all, can y'all help me out this? They got back. I was on hold. They came back. They was like, Miss Pitts, when can you start? I was like, tomorrow. It's a whole different story that go into that. And I'm not going to get into it, but I left. So here I am 15 years later. Here I am. So basically back to CPS work. Year two, this might be a long one. Year two, I like long videos. Year two, that's when I was like, what did I do? What have I done? Now I'm calling my mother. I don't call my mother for stuff. I call her to say how she doing and, you know, how you doing? You look cute and all that, all that. I don't call my mother to be like, ma, I'm about to uh, lose it. <clears throat> So year two, I was like, okay, year four, done. Not getting into that. I'm still there. I'm still there. All right. So w when you do something like that, this type of work, it, I, I didn't know I was a first responder. <clears throat> I didn't know that, um, I didn't know that I was in the category of policemen, firemen, I'll, I'll I'll say teacher, a uh, nurse. There's a line of profession where you're you're you the first one up there, and you're you're you 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 you're there. So I learned about PTSD. Then I learned about secondary PTSD. So I'm I'm having the symptoms. So I'm at home not having dreams about my family's, um, a, a nightmare or two. Um, I'm getting up in the morning. I like to watch the news. So when I get up and get, get ready, I like to watch the news. I, I, I grew up on Good Morning America. Thank you, daddy. My father, <laughs> side note, my father, my mother, like I said, she, I, I didn't say that cause it cut off. All right, my video cut off, so I'm starting over again. So my mother was out of the home about 5.30 in the morning. My father worked a second shift. So he was the primary caregiver. So she, he, 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 he made our breakfast and made sure we was off on time and stuff like that. So those were the roles that they had because my mother was out. My father had the second shift. He had to go. When he came back, she was home. They, they worked it out. That's what they did. So anyway... I digress and I'll forget and I'll jump back in. So I'm gonna jump back over. So anyway, back back to CPS work. Um, oh, okay, because I'm a. Mm -mm. So you 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 you. I I hit a I I hit the wall. I hit the wall I'm, and I'm like I can't do this no more. But I I need to eat. I need a roof. Oh, you know, I need clothes. I need shoes. You know, like you go through stuff like that or whatever. So when I hit my wall, um, I I was in the bathroom crying. So a soup too that I, that I'm still cool with. She came in there with another worker, another clerk, another lady. She came in there. These are African women. So they came in there and caught me crying in the bathroom. And um, this supervisor, hi, uh, her and the clerk, hi, they started to do, a, it was like a dance. It was like this, uh, it was a dance that I wasn't familiar with. It had something to do with their original culture, um, something. So they started to do it and it was some chanting involved. And this happened in the bathroom and, uh, they brought my spirits up and this soup too. She's retired now. I'm on my way. Oh, that cut off. I'm on my way. That cut off. I'm on my way. I call, I called the retirement people. I have a number. I have a number. 
I have a straight number. Once I reach that number, I'm out this piece. But anyway, she said, Miss Pitts, when you, she said, this is what she told me. She said, listen, do your best casework practice. That's how we talk over here. Do your best case work practice so that when you go to bed at night, you know you did the best that you can do and you don't have to deal with it no more. That's it. From that point on, that's what I've been doing. So 15 years later, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm over it. So I'm no longer knocking on doors. I do something different now. I'm still kind of traumatizing myself, but I'm trying to keep a hold on it. But now I just read it. I read it. And then I just do what I do and I pass it on. But there was a time where, I, um, you know, I was in danger. I ain't know I was in danger. I had no clue I was in danger. I had no clue the job I was doing. Okay, I just bounced right back. So other professions, I would, doctors, um, we, have, we have retired police people that work with us they're retired but they work with us under a different name they caken and um they have told me these retired police officers have said y'all do things y'all go places that we don't go that we don't want to go and we got guns y'all go places that we don't like to go and we got guns y'all got a plastic id <clears throat> So when I heard that, I was like, what am I doing? Then I had another instance. I'm like, what, what, what do I do for a living? I had another one. It's like you come up with the, you, 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 you have these experiences where you like, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. Okay. Let's, let me move forward. Where am I? <clears throat> All right. So back to CPS work. Oh my God. I'm early 17. So, um, you, you you see things for me. I, I, I grew up in a stable environment. Uh, my parents, they had their issues. However, it was nothing like what I was what I was exposed to with this job. Um, I'm out now. Um, so I, I don't meet it. I say it. I say it on purpose. I don't meet it. I don't look at it. I don't shake hands with it. I don't sit up and deal with it. I, do, I just do something. I'll read it and, you know, mess with it a little bit. But meeting it, shaking hands with it, getting to know it. I'm talking about the whole family. These are families. And I'm not being derogatory. What I'm saying is the it. It's a, when you compartmentalize, like when you have like, when you compartmentalize, it's like boom, 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 boom. Jones, Jackson, Smith, Harris, four kids, six kids, 10 kids. You, you do it like that because I found myself, um, like I said, thinking, uh, uh, dreaming about them. You may have a nightmare or two. One time I woke up, I'm like, oh my God, I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm just pulling out the sky, the Joneses. So I'm waking up like the Jones, 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 Jones. This is like in four, five seconds. Then my other mind is like, you don't have a Jones. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's what a day is like getting ready. Or the news. I cut off. Maybe I said it. Maybe I didn't. It cut off the news. I get up, wake, I get up, uh, getting ready for the news. I'm like the house, the house, you know, the news would be like this house right here. This is where it all went down right here. I'm watching the news. Like I've never seen that house before. So this is, this is my thought process. I'm like, okay, I've never seen the house. And then I have to wait for the anchor to say, these was the Jenkins, the Jenkins. I'm like, I don't have no Jenkins. I'm like, okay. And then at that point, I can go and move forward and get ready for work. So once you do that over and over and over again for a, a long period of time, it starts to affect you. <sighs> and, um, you know, you make your way out. Some don't. Some do. Some like it. Some don't. I don't. Um...
I never thought that people lived the way that they lived. I never really, I never was exposed to sleeping on a bed with no linen. Straight up mattress, straight up mattress. And it's brown and dark brown and dark brown and dark brown and stuff like that. Hey, this is, this is it. My main focus is immediate danger or imminent danger. That was my main focus. I don't give a crap if you, yo, you, I, listen, I really don't care if it's dishes in the sink. Um, I really don't care if your clothes on the floor. I really don't. There are workers that will, I read notes. I read the workers be like, and it was just so the dishes, it was in the sink, child. I don't care. Do they eat? Are they eating? So I'm so bad. I, I didn't been at this job so long. These new workers or different workers, they be like, and the bed, the bed, the bed was unkempt. Come over here. Come over here. And tell me something. Don't nobody give a damn if your bed wasn't made. I'm here to save lives. So that, after a while, I'm like, I'm not that type of worker. I really don't care. One time, I have to dig because I want to stretch. One time, sometimes they don't let you in. They really don't. I, now, listen, it's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. I got to see you within tw 24 to 48 hours. I got to see you. It's Friday. I didn't work my way into people's places just because. Just because. I'm not, I, I, I feel like a burglar. I feel like a little cat burglar. Like I can, I can work my way into. I can work my way into to a, a dwelling because I had to figure out how to get it done because guess what I gotta see you in two more weeks and I'm not coming back here <laughs> I'm not I'll see you in two weeks so I gotta see these kids right now I didn't use all type of humor I didn't use everything and I have gotten one time this lady she really didn't let me she didn't want I'm the place was a mess. It was a mess. My place has been a mess. Okay? Her place was a mess. I understand. You wasn't expecting company. Your place wasn't fit for company. Stuff like that. I get it. Guess what? It is It is Friday. Girl, I got plans. Or maybe I don't. It's Friday. I don't go to work tomorrow. So the lady was like, ma'am, she was really nice. She was like, ma'am, you know, I just can't, you know, she was trying to deter me. Now I'm thinking like, girl, <laughs> I kept trying with her. I kept trying. I'm like, okay, this is through the door, through the door. I'm like, okay. I said, ma'am, I said, listen, I don't, I'm not here for that. I'm not here for that. I said, I don't want you to feel threatened at all. I said, I need to make sure the kids are alive. I had to, I've had to break it down. It's not the first time. It's, this is not the first time where I have to break it down. And just so I can get what I got to get. I said, ma'am, I, I just, I, I said, I don't care what it looked like. Cause she was saying it, it's not it's not right it don't look right I said ma'am ma'am I said it's okay I said it's okay I said I don't care what it looked like I said look we not no different than each other if you know it or not I said I just need to know if the kids are alive that worked. Just let me see them. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care if it's dishes. I don't care if the bed ain't made. I don't care if they toys everywhere, the, your clothes and all that. I don't care. I need to know that they're alive. And I heard her chuckle a little bit. She kind of made a little noise. And then she unlocked the door. 
I went in. I checked it. I'm out. Peace. Another time, this was a young lady. 18, 19, young mom, straight up, projects, whatever, the whole nine. My, 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 my grandma passed this down to my mother. My, pet, my mother passed it down to me. This is how we live. This young lady, young, snappy. I knew already. She was at the door like, what? I'm like, look, I'm thinking like, girl, now nah, we, you know, so. So I'm, I'm, I'm working my mojo. It wasn't working. She was looking at me like, child, please, I don't care. I am a product of this agency. I was taken by y'all. That's why I don't tell nobody where I work. <laughs> I don't. You can see me in the grocery store, child. You won't know where I, uh, the, the post office. You can see me anywhere. You won't know. Now you know. Anyway, moving forward. Anyway, I can't get forward with the girl. And I noticed that she was trying to reassure me. She was like, I've already got my stuff. I got my paperwork. Look, Pete. She was like, she had already started the process for SSD. Now, SSI, that's one thing. SSI, that's break your leg, break your, my neck, my back, whatever. SSD, that's straight up disability. You done. Good. That girl said, I have already started my process to get my SSD, you know, whatever. There were some, um, I'm sure it, some, it made, made some mental health issues or whatever. So she figured out that she can use, she can utilize, she can utilize that to fund her. So this young lady, this young lady was at the door telling me, look, ma'am, I'm good. I'm okay, I got my stuff, whatever. So I'm thinking like, wow, she's so young and she's already um, she's already getting in the process of getting disability. SSD is, def is different than SSI. So she was already on her SSD journey. So I'm like, okay. I'm still like, okay, cool, whatever. Let me see the kid. Let me see the kid. You know what I'm saying? Just let me see the kid. That's all we want. Let me see the kid so I can so I can leave. So for all y'all, okay. <clears throat> so I'm digging in my purse to get a pen. Cause she's talking now. So I'm like, let me get my pen. She's talking. Cause I got to write. I got my black book. <laughs> I'm like, let me write. She's talking. So I'm trying to dig for the pen. <laughs> I grabbed a tampon that was just in my purse. Hey, I, 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 you know, I'm out there. I may, I may, I, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm protected in every sort of the way. So I grabbed it. It was just lingering in there. It was like one single one. It was uh, in the paper and everything. I'm like, I grabbed it because I'm, you know, my mind is racing. I'm thinking, I'm like, whatever. I'm looking for a pen. I grabbed it. I pulled it out. It was a straight up tampon. So the client saw it and I'm like, okay, oh my God. And she laughed. She thought it was funny and she let me in. So I use all type of tricks. I've used all type of tricks. Um, and she, she kind of laughed and she let me in and I was able to talk to her and, um, there was no immediate or impending, uh, threat. So I was able to go on my way or whatever, but you got to use that. Okay, so, okay, moving forward. Next, um, another story. It can 
can get kind of dark, so I don't know if I want to go there, but I guess I will. So it was one state, not New York. It was one state that wanted to do a reality show about CPS workers. And I was like, they should do it on us. Like, they should really follow us around and see this crap. But anyway, some state, it could have been anywhere, whatever. They did a show about it. All right, moving forward. So in the news, there was a a worker where uh, she was murdered in the parking lot of her job because the parent or parents felt like they she took their kid and they murdered the lady. So <clears throat> um, this is years years ago. So I'm I'm looking at every. I'm like, what what's what you know? So. We have consultants at my job. We have substance abuse consultants. We have me- mental uh, abuse, uh, mental illness consultants, and domestic violence con- consultants. So if your job has that component, you're required to go the, to the consultant. Now these consultants are, uh, um, they're 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 they don't work for the city. They're shipped in from other nonprofit. They're contracted. Okay, they're contracted. So they work in our building, but they don't work for the city. They work from a outside agency. So you have to go get your consult, whatever. <clears throat> so um, I'm on mental health. Okay, so I um, one day I noticed that I was having symptoms and I looked it up. I'm Lady Google. Somebody called me that. I, I'm with it. Because uh, I like that. And then people around me be like, what's this? And I be like, I got it. So somebody was like, whatever. Lady, Lady Google. Okay, anyway. So I was looking up. Um, somebody did, did a study on child protective specialists. Um, and they did a, they, they did a uh, study on post-traumatic stress disorder. It was secondary post-traumatic stress disorder. That's how I learned about it. So I'm on the line like, so 33%, about 30, and I don't have anything in front of me. This is years ago. So I'm just gauging. About 33% of CPS workers exhibited symptoms of depression, nightmares, anxiety, um, just different things. And I was just thinking, like, I experienced that. So I shot an email to the metal, the mental health consultant, not the consultant, her supervisor, because I, I, I follow chain of command, because you ain't going to say I ain't follow chain of command, because I follow chain of command. So I went to her boss. I was like, I'm fine. I'm looking at something secondary post-traumatic stress disorder can we talk about that because they always want to have trainings with us and you know sometimes they do a a, they'll do a therapy thing and so i'm supposed to leave my desk and leave my work and do some therapy smell some smell therapy i'm supposed to do a yoga with y'all i'm supposed to do all this i got work to do it's counterproductive any, uh, it, it did okay. Anyway, so anyway, so I emailed the ball, the coordinator of the consultants, and I said, "Look, I found this. Can we look into this? Can we do something about it? Can we have a training about it?" I'm still waiting on a response. Fifteen years later, no one ever said anything. So at this point, I'm like, they don't care. They don't care. So at that point, I'm like, all right. So. Um, our lives are, our lives are, um, in danger and, uh, we try to protest that don't work. The union try to work with us. We try, it's a uphill battle. Um, a lot of people don't make it. A lot of people quit. Um, a lot of minorities stay. A lot of non-minorities leave because guess what? They're not used to being oppressed. I found that out. I'm like, so people of color, some of us, we're used to being oppressed. Slavery, whatever, whatever. We're kind of used to being 
oppressed. So we get a job that pay us a little money and we be like, okay, non-black people be like, what the fuck is this? And they leave. I've seen many. We stay. All right. <clears throat> I can go on. Where am I? All right. So success stories. So let me, let me go on the upside. There are success stories. There have been times where I have said, wow, and went home feeling good. So it's not gloom and doom. It ain't that. Um, I had a family where the mom, I have, I have like favorite parents. I got like four favorite families in all my years. I got like four favorite families that had nothing to do with nothing. They got caught up in the mix. And I was able to provide and uh, give to them. This one woman, she had eight kids, beautiful lady. She had locks, but she her, her hair had a nice hair t- texture. So her locks were like smooth and nice, but they were really long or whatever. And she was a Rastafarian. She had a bunch of kids, six kids, that's six, eight. She had a bunch of kids. They all looked the same. All of them was beautiful. I ain't never seen a set of kids that look so good. And when I came over, they all sat in the, they all sat in the living room on the floor. I'm, I was born in '75, so we call it Indian style. When you cross your legs, Indian style. They don't say now. They say crisscross applesauce because you can't say that no more. So they was sit, all of them was sitting crisscross applesauce. Beautiful. They all sat there. Beautiful mother. Beautiful. Brown, beautiful. They just wasn't, the, they live in conditions. I don't know, the landlord may have called. They do that. Am I still on? Yes, I'm still on. 37. Landlords do that. Sometimes they want you out. Sometimes they got lead in their paint and they want you out because they won't, you won't let them in. So they kick, they want, okay. Anyway, back to this family. The six, the eight kids. All, she had a bunch of kids and they was all beautiful and they were obedient and they sat there. And I just would talk to their mother and they would just sit there. However, they living conditions wasn't really cool. They had a huge hole in their bathroom ceiling. A, a raccoon would come in their bathroom and mess in their sink. So the ra- a raccoon, the mother told me a raccoon was coming in there using a sink as the toilet. I saw it. She got to the point, I guess she couldn't, she couldn't. It was a plastic bag that lined the sink because I guess she knew they was going to do it anyway. When I got there, it was, the sink was full of um, feces. So I'm like, okay. <clears throat> you know, I'm like, whoa. I saw it. I saw the hole. I'm like, what? what is the landlord doing? Clients, they be like, they won't do nothing. I'm telling them they won't do nothing. I'm like, okay, these kids. You got a bunch of kids. So we have resources in our field office. So we have a whole room full of clothes, Shoes, coats, t- un- we got it all. We have it all. So I ut- I utilized my position and I I just, I racked up. I racked up. And when I went over there, it was the best feeling. I felt like Santa Claus. The, the, it was the best feeling. So I have, I have, I have um, success stories that uh make me feel good and those are the things that keep you going every blue moon you get a success story where you're really helping someone or you really see it you really see it and it make you keep going and make you keep going for like a few years because i guess you think you're gonna you're gonna help somebody else and this is just one instance i have a a few and different um points in my life but okay Back to CPS work. There, there are success stories. I witnessed an adoption. I witnessed like, oh, this is not CPS. So this is when I was in foster care. So I was, a, I was a foster care worker. So years ago, 
years ago, can't remember, and I'm not looking it up. Okay. Clinton, President Clinton implemented a law that no kid, and I remember I was working in this um, time frame when this law was implemented. <clears throat> so President Clinton put in something that said, if your kid, if a kid go into foster care, they can't stay in foster care over 14 months. It may be 12. I think it's 14. President Clinton put in a law that says when your kid goes into foster care, they can't stay in there no longer than 14 months. So I, I'm in real time with this law. So we we felt the... I won't say pressure, but we felt, we felt, we felt, we felt the law. So we, that was part of our, uh, if we had kids that were getting to the, getting up there, you know, they were getting up there, they were placed in a home, maybe it was 12 months, maybe it was 10 months, you know, maybe they were getting up there, they were in there too long. So we felt the pressure to either speak to the foster parent and say, are you ready to adopt? Is this something that you're willing to do? If not, you're going to have to get this motherfucker back. Excuse me. <clears throat> so those were conversations that we had to have with clients. Are you prepared? Are you pre-adoptive? That was a term that we used. Is this a pre-adoptive home? If not, look for other placement. We had to we had to look at that. Is Miss Miss Jane is she willing to go through this? Is this a pre-adoptive home or is she just kind of, you know, fool our line with the child? <laughs> Don't get me started. Is she fool our line with the child? And we had to make that decision. Uh, all right, adoption. I witnessed an adoption. So it was a, a family where um they was going, they was going. And I'm the worker. I'm there. I gotta I have to document, I have to say I'm there, I gotta put the notes in, I gotta do this, all that. I'm there. And I straight up sat there and um it was a whole proceeding. And uh, the, whoa. And the, um, the judge, she spoke to the child. Once a kid gets over, it's a certain age. Once they get to a certain age, they can speak for themselves. So once a kid is, I think, 10, I think 10. Once they get to 10, we no longer have to speak to their parents no more. <clears throat> we don't. <clears throat> the kid the kid can speak for themselves. It's either 10 or 12. So I don't want to. It's either 10 or 12. So once they get 10 or 12, we don't have to really listen to the parent anymore. The child can speak for themselves. So this kid is in court. He is going through the proceeding. And the judge is asking him all the questions. And he was like, yes, yes, and yes. The foster, the foster parent went through the same yes, yes, and yes. So the judge said what she said. And she hit that gavel, and that was it. I'm on the side, like, <laughs> like I am now. <clears throat> I'm on the side, like, whatever. So I've witnessed that. So it's 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 not as it's, it's not. I got till fifty seven. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. You know, it's a wrap. I have my time. It's good. Um, 
that's it. And sometimes it doesn't, uh, it doesn't end well. And I don't want to do this because I, I'm not about to do this. Where am I? Because I, you know, you know, I can do it. Where am I? Oh, 45. Good. 4501. So, um, it's ups and downs and, uh, that's the life of a CPS worker. And, uh, we have many, many stories and, uh, we kind of, uh, we have, uh, success stories that keep us going and then stories that make us say this is not right. And, uh, let me see. Hmm. We uh, provide to the community. Community, we we do things and giveaways and back to school stuff. And, um, if you stay in it long enough, it will damage you. Yeah, it will. All right, so I think that's it. I'm gonna stop it here. One time, one time, ew, a young lady, a young mom, she wasn't even the mother. This was a sister. <clears throat> the sister answered the door. The mama wasn't there, whatever. Anyway, and she was like, I think I want to be a social worker. So this young person that was like telling me, I want to, I want to be a social worker. I'm like. So, I'm not going to detour anyone's dreams, but I'm not going to lie to you either. So, I told the young lady, I said, well, <laughs> excuse me, I said, well, and she was on my every word. I said, well, I said, it's very rewarding. I said, it's very rewarding. And I said, it's, it's very challenging as well. I said, so, you know, it's up to you. I said, if you if that's something that you want to do, if you want to help families, if, <clears throat> if that's something that you want to do, I said, I go, I go for it. I was thinking like, girl, but I ain't going to squash nobody's dream. But I was thinking like, girl, I said, listen, you know, you know you'll find out, you'll find out. Cause I that was was said to me. It's like a weird thing that we pass down. I didn't do that. I'm on the record. I didn't do that. So when you go through orientation and you go through all that and whatever, whatever, now you're in the field office. Now you're in a training unit. So you're not like everybody else. You're not like everybody else. Y'all, y'all. But everybody know you knew and you training. So you kind of different. So people would straight up pull you to the side and say, leave. You don't want this. Run. This is not there. For, you know, we would come back because you have to meet back. You have to go to, you have to go on site and then you got to meet back and you got to go, you got to go. So we would come back and meet and be like, people telling us to leave. Everybody have this story. Everybody has this story. I didn't been around. Everybody got this story. You get back to your, when, you, when your training unit get back to y'all little hub, when y'all do y'all little hub and y'all get together, you will hear, they, they, the people at the job, the people at the site telling us to leave. We was all like, me too. Me too. Somebody, somebody told me to leave too. You don't, you just don't know. You just don't know. So year two, I was like, crap. Year four, I was like, okay. Year 15, I'm like, y'all owe me. I got, I got, I got a little, I got a little bit more. Y'all going to pay me for the rest of my life. Thank you. My name is Erica LaShawn. Please like and subscribe. Uh, thank you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.